Hello Capricorn and welcome to your monthly horoscope for February. This is for the Sun or the Ascendant. Now I'm going to give you a broader overview of what to expect, not least that there is a new moon on the first day, which is exciting because it's in your sector of resources. New moons gives us an opportunity to set our intentions, but the bad boy that is your ruling planet of Saturn is close in attendance, so I need to go through that with you in detail to explain the pros and cons. Also, Venus and Mars are very closely allied in your sign, particularly from the beginning of week two to the end of the month. That's really exciting. Can't wait to tell you more about that. Mercury is retrograde in Capricorn as February begins, however. So just need to explain how that's going to connect with Pluto in your sign, but also get into a bit of a jagged right angle with Uranus in the last 10 days. So please stay with me as I go into much greater detail. If you are new to my channel, I'd be honored if you would subscribe, please click or tap on the bell notification symbol. This means every time I drop a video on YouTube, you'll just get a little alert, which uh, lets you know about that. And if you'd like to get your free written daily horoscope, fire to your device each morning, free of charge, please see the link beneath this video. I've been writing these for over 25 years and it would be a pleasure to share that with you. And of course, if you do want to ascend above this Zodiac broadcast and embrace your more serious astrology based on your time, date and place of birth, you can order your year's forecast, get a character analysis with my special package and get 30% off by seeing the link beneath this video. The forecast will take you into the early parts of 2023. So Capricorn, welcome to your February forecast. So what's the significance of Mercury in its retrograde as the month begins? Well, I think it may be something that is to do with a creative strand of yours that you're wanting to do well financially from, but maybe you've had to rethink it a little bit. Now, don't see that, if that is the case, as being uh, a, a negative thing. It's just the way it works with Mercury retrogrades when they go across two zodiac signs. Because when the retrograde began, it was actually in your second house on the 14th of January. The second house very much to do with resources, linking us into that new moon, which occurs on the first day of this month. So your desire to improve your financial lot is going to be strong, but it's when Mercury returns to Aquarius on the 14th, after it goes direct on the 3rd, and also out of shadow on the 5th of this month, that you'll really start to see how this is shaping up because that new moon on the very first day of this month is in conjunction with your ruler. Saturn has got a really, really bad reputation, but you know, in serious astrology, Saturn is often a marker of when we have breakthroughs on situations, but it often requires an enormous amount of persistence. But that's one of the attributes that your zodiac sign generally tends to have in oodles. And that's because you are a sticker. Whereas other people can give up when obstacles come along, your Saturnian nature means that you're prepared to roll up your sleeves, apply yourself, and really put in and stint in application until you get results. So if something needs a little bit more steel and energy and willpower this month, do go for it because your creativity is going to be enormously high. So really do believe that the breakthrough is on the cusp of occurring, but you may not see it immediately when that new moon occurs. Now, the second house is also about the things we enjoy in life, you know, creature comforts, and it can be good food and good wine. If you did set yourself a New Year's resolution and it has drifted a little bit, you can use the energy of Saturn in a positive way to get yourself back on track. I know it's certainly not very sexy stuff, but if you really want to achieve this goal, then again, it's within your grasp. Now, as this month begins, Venus and Mars are pretty close together. Venus in your sign has, of course, been in retrograde and it kind of had a reputation of being a bad thing somehow among some astrologers. And of course, retrogrades can require us to rethink, reset, recalibrate 
and perhaps a relationship did need some rethinking. But Venus doesn't just rule relationships, it rules money, self-worth, and also the things we enjoy in life. So in your sign, in Capricorn, Venus is very much to do with structures. So it could be that Venus in Capricorn and its retrograde has seen you thinking about where you live. And, you know, often you do like a very sort of classy environment. Maybe it's a little bit understated and not necessarily flash, but you do like a degree of, uh, of uh, a pizzazz around your home environment. And perhaps Venus has seen you making some decorative changes. Perhaps the changes you've used with Venus's help have been more to your personal appearance. But with Mars alongside Venus, but particularly tightly from the start of the second week of this month to the end of the month, the one thing that you really have in your celestial locker this month is awesome sex appeal. Now for here you choking on your tea, I'm very sorry, but you need to look at your level of belief. Because wherever you are in your life, whether you're looking for intimacy or not, it's lovely to be admired. You know, whether we're going in and out of a shop door and someone just flashes us a lovely smile, that can be hugely gratifying. So the energy that you can give out this month has a supercharged charm to it. So enjoy the attention that this can garner. But if you are serious about starting afresh in your love relationship world, you know, if there is somebody that's coming up on your radar, it wouldn't really be a surprise because both Jupiter and Uranus are feeding in to the uh, conjunction between Venus and Mars right at the start of this month. So there's a lot of energy, a lot of vibrancy. Jupiter in your sector of conversation, text messages, uh, ideas, and Uranus in a very creative zone, the fifth house, which is very much to do with romance. But of course Uranus is about being free-spirited, but it's also rather a restless influence. So if your relationship is rather dull, I, th I think what all these energies are saying to you is, take the lead, you take the lead in, in trying to re-engender the spark. It may frustrate you that a partner's not uh, showing more initiative to do so themselves, but you are a leader. You know, you are a cardinal sign. And we're in the last uh, cardinal quadrant of the year, which is very much started with the energy of your sign on the winter solstice. So this is about your leadership skills coming to the fore in the 13 weeks through to the end of the astrological year as the sun ends its journey through Pisces and moves into Aries. So this is your time to shine and maybe someone needs a bit of motivation. Maybe you can surprise them with some of your moves. And I think you could surprise yourself. You have a reputation for caution. And I'm not saying that when it comes to money and risk taking in terms of speculation, certainly with Saturn on that new moon, I'm not saying that you should throw that to the wind. What I'm saying is that when it comes to your personal charisma, this is a month which can see you shine. So really seize the moment. Now, Mercury is going to be immediately conjoining with Pluto once it comes out of that retrograde. So a great chance to rethink something. Rethink something that requires quite a lot of, of uh, potential analysis. But that is something that you can do with a plum. Also, if on the back of, of Mercury returning to the sign of Aquarius on the 14th, you start to see results, that's going to give you a lift. But there is a full moon which occurs on the 16th and it is in a tense 150 degree angle with Pluto in your sign. What does that mean? I think it means that when it comes to shared resources or money that is going between you and someone else you're closely involved with, it could be in a personal relationship, it could be a business tie, it may even be the relationship you have with your financial institution. But what Pluto's saying is 
is giving you the confidence that if something's out of kilter between the ins and outgoings or the contributions, not on a quid pro pro basis, but if you feel that someone's not really pulling their weight as much as you're putting your level of application investment into any kind of shared resources, you're going to want an improvement. So, you know, if you get an insurance from a, a particular uh, uh, provider or perhaps um, some kind of savings plan if you're not feeling that you're getting the value that you feel it's really worth the last couple of weeks of this month can see you really determined to actually shake things up and make things better and good for you if so mercury does square with saturn uh with uranus sorry towards the end of this month and that can create a little bit of a desire to be a bit more spontaneous around your resources but there's a magical link between Venus in your sign and Neptune in your sector of everyday communications in the last 10 days ring a bell well that aspect brought us into the new year for the first 12 days but because Venus has retraced its steps it's being repeated but this gives you another opportunity to have some kind of connection with someone could be a neighbor could be a sibling, someone in your community, someone whose ideas inspire you. You may want to write something. Maybe you're someone who blogs or tweets quite a lot, but you can be on really inspirational form as this month draws to a close and pull more people's attention to you. But what also happens on the 18th, Capricorn, is that the sun moves into Pisces. The last of the 12 zodiac signs but for you this can lead to a speeding up of events jupiter's already in this location the sun's not going to reach to connect with jupiter this month that will happen in march but generally speaking i think this can give you a greater sense of optimism and desire to interact in a sparkling way with others so expect the pace of life to speed up and some of the more practical and foundational issues that are coming under review this month due to that uh, new and full moon and also uh, those those new and full moons and also mercury's transition back into your second house makes way for a time when it's more about mixing and mingling and if with we all hope that there's some kind of improvement to the the uh, COVID landscape out there, wherever you are, it is possible to spend more time with people, uh, more freely associate, then the sun moving into, uh, into Pisces is perfect for that in the last 10 days of this month. Now, of course, this is a month when we do have Valentine's Day on the 14th. So what are your prospects? Well, if you're single, I think they're absolutely excellent. I can't guarantee that you'll meet someone or get invited out on a date. But if you do, your energy is absolutely topped up to max. And as I said before, if you're in a relationship which has become rather dull and predictable, I think if you take the lead, you may be surprised by what energy that tends to stimulate between you and yours. It's been a pleasure being with you. Stay safe, take care and goodbye.